I want us to imagine that we all have on this beautiful hunter green shirt, a jersey. Each of us has that on. On the front is a white numeral, and it's outlined in blue. That's royal blue. And in fact, on the sleeves, there's a little royal blue stripe. Now, the numbers on these jerseys, on these shirts, are numbered one to five. What number will be on your jersey? Right now, I'd like for you to think, what number will be on my jersey? One, two, three, four, or five. Now, does everyone have that number etched in your mind? All right. Everyone who chose number one, if you will, please stand. All right. Number one, you are eyes. You're the eyes of the body. Okay? Thank you. Number two, everybody that chose number two, will you stand? Okay. You are the ears of the body. The ears of the body. All right? Have a seat. Number three. Everybody. Number, <coughs> number three. Wow. A lot of number threes. Uh, even the cameraman's a number three. How, how, can we, how can we beat that? Number three. You're the nose. You're the nose of the body. All right? Have a seat. Number four. Number four. All right. Number four, there's something psychological about that, Rosemary. <laughs> but uh, number four, you're the hands of the body. You're the hands. All right? Thank you. Number five, who number five? Well, I had to be respectful of this group. Number five, you're the feet. Kind of smelly, but you're the feet. Thank you. Now, which is the most important? I mean, think about it. If you had to give up one of those, which one would it be? <coughs> the truth is it takes all of us. But some of you whiny number fives are kind of thinking, man, I wish I'd been a number one. I should have chosen a different number. Now, let's do that again. All the number ones, would you please stand up? You're apostles. You're apostles in the church. Have a seat. Number two, will all of you number two stand up? You're the prophets. You're the prophets of the church. All right, have a seat. Number three, number three. That's the center. You're, <laughs> that's the rear end. No, number three, you're the teachers. You're the teachers. The prophets go out and proclaim and teach. You're the ones who keep the saved saved. You're the ones who are teaching. Okay, have a, have a seat. Number four, you're the healers. You're able to heal. Think about that. We wouldn't need a hospital. As long as you came and touched those people, you were healers. All right? Have a seat. Number five, you can speak in languages you've never studied, languages that you've never even studied, and suddenly now you are uh, fluent in those languages. Thank you. Have a seat. Now, of all of these gifts, which one you'd rather have? Well, you'd rather have the one you have. I mean, apostles, they were miracle workers, weren't they? weren't they? They were the authorities. They spoke with authority. Wouldn't you want to be an apostle? What about a prophet? They didn't always. Only about 5% of the work of a prophet was for telling the future. About 95% of it was just telling the word, just telling people. Uh, they were inspired. The Holy Spirit was working through them. Wouldn't it be great to be a prophet? What about a teacher? Some of us are just teachers at heart. Wouldn't it be great to be a teacher? They were not. Sometimes they were inspired. Sometimes they were not. Their job was to keep the same saved. But what about you healers? I imagine you're in demand. You're really in demand. I mean, let's think about it. There would be no need for hospitals if we had enough of you around. But the number one position in the church, according to most people, were speaking in tongues, people. I mean, it was amazing to hear someone get up and speak a language that they had never, never studied. But you know what? Just like it took each part of the body to function, it takes each part of the church to function. 
You see, we're not in competition with each other. In this room, because we're a university, there's a hierarchy. We have bosses, we have faculty, we have students, we have everyone in between. We all know where we fit, we're all part of that. But more importantly, we're part of the body of Christ. And to make this university even better than it already is, we have to be team players. Just like our body has to have team players, <coughs> sometimes our team players malfunction. And just like the body, the church, we have to have team players. If you will open your Bibles, if you have them, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want us to understand that in verse 12, that was read for us a few moments ago, we find out that we are not in competition. We can no more compete with another Christian or another congregation than the parts of our body would compete with one another. You see, when we're talking about the church, we're not talking about merely a human organization. We're talking about something that is bought with the blood of Jesus. Believers are bound together. We're bound together by people we don't even know, with people we don't even know by the blood of Jesus. Once I was doing mission work in Italy on a short-term mission campaign, and I couldn't speak Italian, and they couldn't speak English. We had to have an interpreter. But I noticed some of the people were crying. And I thought, ooh, I didn't know my speaking was that bad. And so I asked the interpreter, why are they crying? They said, they don't understand what you're saying, but they know you love the same Lord they love. That's one of the most powerful things I've ever heard. We were put together by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now notice in verse 13 that we are all one <coughs> in Christ Jesus. There in Galatians 3, verse 28, we learn that we are one in Christ Jesus. We learned that same lesson by Paul in another place. We are brought near, according to Paul in Ephesians, by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what binds us together. When my boys were little, uh, we'd go on vacation, and they'd fight in the back seat. And I'd pull that car over, and I'd stop, and I'd point to them, and I'd say, What's your last name? He said, Burleson. I say, what's yours? Burleson. Do you notice something? We're on the same team. We've got the same blood going through our veins. That means we get along. Sadly, it doesn't. <laughs> but it's the way it is in the church. We don't always get along. There's no room for competition because we're all team players. Matt, thank you so much for leading Annie J. Flynn's song, Christ has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet to lead men in his way. He has no tongues but our tongues to tell men how he died. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. Look, I'm not in competition with anyone as long as we're on the same team, Amen. pulling together, serving the Lord. There are no big chiefs, and there's no little Indians. We're all together. One time I had the privilege in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, to introduce Brother Basil Overton. And I introduced him this way. I said, if there were officers in the church, this man would be a general. Because that's the way I felt, and I still feel that way. Yeah. And he got up and he said, son, I want you to know something. We're all privates in the Lord's army. Now that's powerful. We're all privates in the Lord's army. Look at verse 15. If the foot, let's see, that was number five. Those of you who are number five. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, those number fours, I am not the body. Is it therefore not the body? Some evidently in the church thought that because they did not have some kind of important gift, they were not essential. And we see these people all the time. One lady, Mrs. Clara Wright, Sister Clara Wright, a long time ago told me, you know, I'm not important to this church. All I do is come over on Monday morning and straighten up all the hymn books. That's the only thing I can do. I'm not important. 
I want you to know she was one of the most important people in that church. Not because she straightened up the hymn books, but because she was a Christian lady. Godly example. She just didn't realize how important she was. Look at verse 18. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Wait a minute. Do you mean I'm in the body of Christ where God wants me? You see, we have different gifts. And it's depending on the grace given to us. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit distributes to each person as he decides to do so. And so that means that every Christian has an important assigned role in the body of Christ, assigned by God himself. And so you know what? We can never boast about what God has given us or think too little of ourselves because whatever we're doing, wherever God is using us, he has assigned us to that task. Doesn't mean he won't assign us to a different task later, but right now, as my mentor, Brother Paul Rogers, told me one time, son, wherever you go, I want you to know you're God's man in God's place, doing God's business. It doesn't matter if you're on the corner of the earth where the sun rarely shines. Where do we fit? Look down at verses 19 and 20. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Isn't that wonderful? Look beyond your local congregation and see the real unity of the church. The church is not just that little group I meet with over at Hamilton. It's not just the group that you meet with wherever you meet. The church is universal. And there is no lighthouse competition. Think about that. There's no competition between lighthouses where one was trying to get them to avoid rocks more than the other. There's no competition there. We're baptized into one body. Think about that. We're one. But you know, sometimes we have weaker members. Look down at verse 21 through 26. Yet the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our <coughs> presentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it. That there should be no schism or no division in the body. But the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members honor. Rejoice with you. There was a imperial Roman <coughs> caste system, honor system, where some people were senators, and they were thought of so highly. And then there were people who were just regular old folks. I, I believe that the people who were the eyes and the head they were probably the affluent and educated, educated elite. And the hands and the feet were probably the slaves who did manual labor. But no one could say about either group, we don't need them. We don't need them anyway. <clears throat> My sister-in-law just tore her Achilles heel, tendon, Achilles tendon. You think that affected the rest of her body? Yeah, <laughs> drastically. It has affected her body drastically. Well, you just try tearing your Achilles tendon and see if it affects the rest of your body. When one part of the church, the universal church, is hurting, we ought to all hurt with it. There's no, no room for competition. We're team players. Look at verse 25. <clears throat> what I get from verse 25 is that the purpose of the gifts that the Holy Spirit had given them was to build each other up, not to flaunt, not to flaunt their own spirituality. Warren Wearsby tells a story about a famous preacher who came and spoke to a small group of preachers at a preacher's meeting. And his friend found out about it. He said, why? Why did you do that? 
why don't you go speak to that little group of preachers? And here's what he said. If I didn't need them on the way up, I may need them on the way back down. Some of you, when you graduate, are going to be, if you're not already, are going to be working with small churches. Churches that Dr. Barrier correctly calls duct tape ministries. You know, jack of all trade ministries. Because my first full time work with a church at Deerfield Church of Christ in Lawrence County, Tennessee, I <clears throat> preached the sermons, did the funerals, married the people, but I also mowed the grass, cleaned the bathrooms, cleaned the baptistry, and vacuumed the auditorium. You see, some of you are going to be in first ministries where it's going to be like that. But I want you to understand something. You're filling a role. You're doing something important. Be a team player. Do whatever the Lord needs you to do. Now finally, I want you to realize that you are Christ's body. Look at verse 27. And let's read through the end of the chapter. And as we read, I want you to look for yourself. Look for you in this reading. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. But God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, that's those number one folks. Second prophets, those are number two folks. Teachers, number three folks. After that, miracles and gifts of healing, that's number four folks. <coughs> Helps, administrations, and varieties of tongues, that's that number five group. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. The more excellent way is for us to be team players. To refuse competition in the family of God. And to quote again a great man. We're all privates in the Lord's arms. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? <coughs> Father, thank you for loving us in spite of us. Thank you for using us. Forgive us when we're filled with pride and envy. Forgive us, Father, when we fail to weep with those that weep. Fail to rejoice with those that rejoice. And help us, Father, to realize that you're using us as your hands, your tongue, your feet. And our Father, we pray that you will help us to do that in the jobs that you have assigned us to do without complaining, complaining or bickering. Thank you, Lord, for assigning us to be here today. Your will be done in Jesus' name.